down in Texas, there was a mass shooting that took place. And when I first heard about it, uh, someone told me that there was a guy who was claiming to be a white nationalist. And when I looked at the name and I saw the last name Garcia, mm -hmm. and I looked him up and his name was Mauricio Garcia, and he looks to be Hispanic. Uh, it really made me think about, you know, all of the, 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 the racism and the racist that you see brewing in the Hispanic community. Some that has that has been in existence for a while against mm -hmm. black people. And, you know, you see the various videos online, you see how uh, some of them treat black people in pub in public and in person. And here you have a guy who is, in his mind, a Caucasian. He's white. Okay, this is a picture of him, and you can see the swastika tattoo on his chest. Mm -hmm. uh, so in his mind, he believes that he is a white nationalist. Mm -hmm. So when we see, you know, the uprise of many of Hispanics coming across the border in states like Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, um, and we see the population of Hispanics in this country rising to the levels that they are. In many cases, some people have said that if if white supremacy was defeated in this country, or if, or if white people were overpopulated by Hispanics in this country, then essentially there would be a new population of people who would practice racism and in their minds, quote unquote, white supremacy against black people. Mm -hmm. So I know you've also been following this and wanted to go into how you see white supremacy now starting to change forms. Well, you know, we called it the rise of the non-white white supremacists. And I would like to hear how Neely Fuller respond, responded to that. Uh, but you also notice on his arm, the uh, SS uh, insignia there uh the the uh hitler's uh you know special uh operations that were that were led by heinrich himmler so so this this guy um who uh says that uh garcia suggested several times that he was of hispanic origin at one point indicating they were originally from mexico but expressed white supremacy ideology um he said that uh, that yeah, we're going to make America white again. Okay, so he's obviously considering himself to 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 be white. Uh, he also shared poll posts from the Daily Stormer, a neo-Nazi white supremacist website. Some were some posts were anti-Semitic. He wrote, "America is controlled by uh, a cabal of scheming Jews, and the time has come to rise up against them." But very similar to the manifesto of Peyton Gendron in Buffalo, who do, they, they identify what they think is the source of their problem, and then they go out and attack innocent people. I mean, he wound up killing uh, three Koreans, three Hispanics, uh, one Indian American who was here on a, uh, a work visa, and one white person, including three children, uh, the a three year old child of the, the Korean couple, uh, Korean American couple that was killed, and two Hispanic girls, ages eight and eleven. Uh, and so, I mean, this you know, you you have to you have to wonder, uh, you know, how deep is this? And I think we we have an indication from some earlier confrontations. Uh, that that have that, that have taken place around the country, particularly in California, and I just want to read something from you know, from the brilliant uh, Latino scholar, Dr. Uh, Tanya Fernandez Hernandez. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about Johanna, Dr. Tanya Hernandez, and she said, "The fact is that racism and anti-black racism, in particular, is pervasive and historically in." 
and a historically entrenched reality of life in Latin America and the Caribbean. More than 90% of the approximately 10 million enslaved Africans were taken to Latin America in the Caribbean. Uh, the legacy of the slave period in Latin America is similar to that of the United States. Having lighter skin and European features increases the chances of socioeconomic opportunity, while having darker skin and African features simil similar, uh, severely limits social mobility. White supremacy, just check this out now. This is what Tanya Hernandez is writing, in a, and I think this might have been in 2005. White supremacy is deeply ingrained in Latin America and continues to present uh, in Mexico. For instance, citizens of African descent who are estimated to make up 1% of the population report that they, are regular, they regularly experience racial harassment at the hands of local and state police. Uh, and uh, she goes on to discuss uh, Mexican public discourse reflects the hostility toward blackness, consider such common phrases as getting getting black to denote getting angry and a supper of blacks to describe a riotous gathering of people. Similarly, the word black is often used to mean ugly. It is not surprising that Mexicans who have been surveyed indicate a disclination uh, this inclination to marry darker skinned partners. Okay, and then uh, there was a professor who was at, at Duke at the time uh, named uh, Dr. Paula McLean, and she did a study, as a matter of fact, that says, um, she said Latin, Latin, Latino immigrants come to the United States with negative stereotypes of black Americans. Okay, so, so these were studies that were, this study I think was done in the early 2000s, and I think uh, Tanya Hernandez is writing an article in the LA Times in, in I think around the 2005, 2006 time frame, if I'm remembering correctly. Might have been a little bit later. I can't remember now. It may have been later. But uh, anyway, so what we see is this is a global phenomenon. Because African people, African men, African women, African children, have been disempowered over the past 500 plus years by barbaric and sophisticated systems of white supremacy. Because we have been disempowered, then in, the entire world views us through the same lens. The entire world. It's an issue of power. Now, you know, and, and Amos Wilson warned us about this concept, this people of color concept. Now, now we know that of course, there are, it's like, it, you, you don't make blanket condemnations, you know, remember the Young Lords, for example, during the, uh, the, the, the Black Liberation Movement, we remember the uh, Puerto Rican nationalists who, uh, you know, tried to uh, liberate Puerto Rico, uh, you know, from being, quote unquote, a colony or a state <laughs> from the uh, United States. So, we recognize that, but generally speaking, and uh, there was just a protest uh, last week oh, in Chicago because uh, the governor of Texas is busing people. Uh, the governor of Texas and the governor of, of California, Abbott and uh, DeSantis, are busing people out of their states into the north. In fact, uh, one of them sent a busload of people they dropped off in, in front of the home of the vice president, Kamala Harris. And people in the South Shore community of Chicago were upset because uh, there, was a, there was a black high school in the community, which the city closed. And in Chicago, the majority of the people on the streets who are homeless are people of African descent. But they, but they plan to open this school and provide uh, beds for, you know, some of the uh, Hispanic people who are uh, Latino people who had been, you know, shipped to Chicago, you know, from Texas or from, yeah, I think primarily from Texas. Now, we understand that it is imperialism. It is United States imperialism that has created these, the conditions in these countries. But at the same time, people in underserved African communities, you know, like the, the South Shore community, are saying, you know, we're suffering. You know, where's the help for us? 
Now, they would obviously like to pit one group against another, but, but you can see that you have people that are coming in who already have negative uh, attitudes towards people of African descent. So, you know, this is a this is another issue that 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 we're going to have to deal with. Uh, one of the brothers commented on our page. You know, what what will it take for our people to wake up and realize that that uh, you know the white supremacists are just in a process of replacing us because we're considered to be the major threat. So, you know, they've already taken jobs in a lot of uh, uh, industries. And sometimes black people don't want to work in these industries. But, hey, this is this is this is a problem that's emerging. The rise of the non-white white supremacists. And right now it's operating more at the individual level. But what happens if it becomes institutionalized? Well, a lot of these guys are just flunkies. And as you stated earlier, these guys are I mean, pretty much a dummy. I mean, you go in saying that you want to make America white again, but then you go and kill white people along with the other with your own people. <laughs> like even with Peyton Gendron, like you said, both of these guys, they they wrote on paper that the Jews were the biggest problem or the biggest threat to America. And Peyton Gendron goes out and targets black people in a grocery store where predominantly black people shop. And when he did come across a white male in that grocery store, he apologized to him in the process of almost shooting him. So Peyton Gendron uh, targeted black people, even though he wrote the Jews were the biggest threat, but still had enough sense to not shoot a white person. Yeah. This guy just goes in and randomly shoots random targets, killing the people that he proclaims to be trying to save. And they said that he had, just like Gendron had, driven to the tops, uh, you know, supermarkets several times. This guy had, had cased the mall. He had studied the mall. He had diagrams of the mall. He knew what the demographics of the mall were. And it was an out, outdoor mall. So he just pulled up and just started opening fire on people that happened to be standing in front of this, you know, particular um, location just randomly killing people and yeah a lot of these people i believe they just want their five seconds of fame and they go out and when they get into committing these acts i mean the act is already stupid but you you're making yourself look even more stupid based upon how you're carrying out the act you know, actually, and he, he's he's a person that <laughs> that uh, they would like to run out of the country. You know, I mean, but obviously, if they had a flunky like him, uh, like the uh, guy that uh, was the leader of the Proud Boys, who is, coincidentally is facing 20 years in prison uh, for sedition. Uh, but these both of these guys are, you know, Hispanics and they could this guy's, you know, in claiming to be, you know, a white supremacist. And it's amazing how white people are able to get other people of, of other ethnicities to take on their personalities and their culture as if it were their own. As if it were their own. Totally how black people take on the, the white images of Jesus and the white idolatry and we take on their personalities through a lot of our behaviors and our actions. Here you have Hispanics. I've also seen Asians, Indians take on this white personality and become a proxy for white people without white people having to go out and actually do it for themselves. 